Hi, I'm John, captain of ULA's rocket ship. Recently, our travels took us from Decatur, Alabama to Cape Canaveral, Florida, where we picked up more cargo. And then our final destination was Vandenberg Air Force Base in California via the Panama Canal. The rocket ship, nestled 298 miles up the Tennessee River, takes on the Delta Heavy rocket for United Launch Alliance. The trip begins at an elevation of 556 feet above sea level. Twenty-three miles below Decatur is Joe Wheeler Lock and Dam. It is our first of four locks operated by the Tennessee Valley Authority on the Tennessee River that allows a step-down staircase of 48 feet in level. Now into the Wilson Pool, we transited approximately two hours to enter the Wilson Lock Chamber, the highest single lift east of the Rockies. Once secured in Wilson Lock, we were now lowered a distance of approximately 90 feet. Exiting Wilson Lock and Dam is a narrow channel for five miles that leads us generally shallow water past Florence, Alabama. Now passing Florence, Alabama, the rocket ship transits a shallow region with a rocky bottom. The crew expects five more hours of transit to Pickwick Lock and Dam. This trip, the vessel anchored above Pickwick Lock for daylight transit only requirements through the lock. This was due to higher than average water and fast current conditions. At morning twilight, the ship approaches Pickwick Lock. The vessel will be lowered approximately 48 feet and the transit continues in a narrow stretch of the Tennessee River for 106 miles, commonly referred to as the Wiggles. After passing New Johnsonville, Tennessee, the vessel enters the region known as the Land of Lakes, commonly known to the crew to be more relaxed in a buoy channel leading to the Kentucky Lock and Dam. This elevation drop is approximately 43 feet. After locking and a transit of 21 miles, we leave the Tennessee River in our rearview mirror and join the Ohio River. The vessel now is located in Paducah, Kentucky at an elevation of 320 feet above sea level. The deck crew returns to normal sea watches since the portion of the trip will transit over the lock and dam at Olmstead by a buoy navigable channel. After five hours of transit on the Ohio River, the vessel turns southbound on the lower Mississippi River, approximately 14 hours away from Memphis, Tennessee, and approximately two days from Baton Rouge. Other major cities along the route are Greenville, Mississippi, Vicksburg, Mississippi, Natchez, Mississippi, and finally arriving at Baton Rouge, Louisiana. There we anchor for fuel replenishment. We now have accumulated 1,070 miles of river and dropped in sea level of a distance of 546 feet to nearly join sea level. Passing New Orleans by night is an impressive sight of lights from the water's edge to the tall office buildings to include the twin bridges known as the Crescent City Connection. The Federal pilot disembarks at the Southwest Pass sea buoy as the journey continues to Cape Canaveral. After crossing the Gulf of Mexico, traffic conditions are generally light. At Dry Tortugas, the southernmost point in the continental United States, the ship joins the Florida Straits and follows the Florida Keys to the Atlantic seaboard. The rocket ship finally arrives at Cape Canaveral, completing a sea voyage taking three and a half days and approximately eight and a half days from Decatur, Alabama. Departing the dock, the journey to sea is a short seven miles. The pilot disembarks and the transit continues for slightly more than three days. We begin approaching Gatun Lock with a complement of Panamanian linemen. Gatun, the first lock, has three chambers. Next is Pedro Miguel Lock with one chamber, and last, Mir Flores Lock has two chambers. Signing out with the authorities at Flamenco Single Station, the ship enters briefly into the Gulf of Panama and enters the Pacific Ocean with 12 days of voyage ahead. The crew maintains bridge watch activity, engine room assignments as the deck crew participates in lookout duties and chasing rust spots with paint. 
The galley crew maintains the morale with three square meals daily. Knowing we are close to our destination, the mountains of Southern California finally come into view. A timed arrival and the first landing at Vandenberg Air Force Base commenced at morning break of first light. The first CBC Delta rocket was offloaded with an associated second stage container. The ship can only stay in this small harbor for a window of usually three to four hours. This is due to tide height constraints and available water to float the ship safely. With more cargo to offload, the vessel anchors nearby east of Government Point to wait for the next available window for an acceptable tide cycle. The second docking at Vandenberg shows the second CBC Delta rocket was offloaded with a fairing section. At this point in viewing the final delivery of the rocket components, the crew of the rocket ship breathes a sigh of relief knowing the safe delivery and the critical mission is now complete.